this is Matt with Let's Talk Music. I'm here with Alex Shrimp or Shrimp, not Shrimp. It's sh- sh- Shrimp without the R. <laughs> yeah. Of the of Black Lip out of Muncie, Indiana. How we doing, buddy? Uh, I'm really good, man. I'm really good. How are you today? I am great. Um, first off, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> um, Muncie, Indiana. What uh kind of music scene is that? I mean, I know it's like you. Was, we were just talking about hip hop and stuff, so. Yeah. What's what's uh, how's that work for you with playing, you know, the music you you're into? Well, um, you know, I don't really do a lot of local shows right now, uh, especially since COVID. It's been obviously weird, I think, in this area, especially just getting the music scene kind of back turning. Uh, there's not really much of a music scene in Muncie. We have a couple small venues here, but I mean, for the most part, like playing shows and like getting out of here, I'm probably I'll have to go to Indy and, and hit other um i guess other little scenes outside of uh, the muncie scene real small town uh there's a college here called ball state which a lot of people are familiar with mm-hmm. uh, so maybe you know twenty three thousand kids go there but outside of that there's there's not much here <laughs> so yeah i wanted to um you know i was looking at your your press release i just wanted to touch on something before we get into anything else um <clears throat> i see that you reflect it. It says black lip reflects making music that creates a unique em- emotion in the listener is always my goal. I want to be memorable, not so much because of my image and more because of the way my songs make you feel. Yeah. That just saying it gave me goosebumps, dude, that that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what music's about. Yeah, dude. I, I think we lose a lot of that um, in modern music. I, there's so much pop music, like, you know, obviously you, you just heard me tell you some of the rappers I worked for, but um, we just lose so much of that emotion. Uh, you know, writing's one thing, but I feel like captivating somebody, um, maybe like hitting on a trauma they had and maybe helping them do that trauma. You know, those things are important to me as a person because a lot of music like, you know, Three Days Grace and Matchbox 20 and, you know, a few other bands that I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, just of their writing. That's what they did for me. So, I mean, it's kind of just like me giving back, I guess, to the listener and um, hoping that somebody hears that in the right format. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, like I said, I respect that a lot. Cause I mean, <clears throat> I'm obviously big into music or I wouldn't be d- doing this. Um, I, I love concerts. I love music always have since I was a kid. And it's, <clears throat> I think a lot of what drew me into it was how it made me feel. Um, you know, there's some songs that, you know, they weren't made to make you feel any kind of way. They just, you know, to, to jam, but, you know, a majority of songs have some sort of hidden meaning to it. And, you know, if you're, if you're really into the artist or you're really into the music or whatever, you can, you can sniff that out for sure. And, you know, that's what I, you know, kind of liked about what I've become, um, you know, you could tell that there was a hidden meaning there about, I, I, I would have to say it almost to me was about some kind of abuse or something. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, like, like growing up, uh, you know, I, I just had some trauma, you know, with, um, I don't even want to say parents. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, but my stepdad, uh, wasn't my favorite person in the world. Let's put it that way. Right. Uh, you know, so, you know, just, just, dealing with people that, that try to harm you. I mean, like over a long period of time, like, or, or just any, anything in general, like that harm you kind of against your will or, um, kind of trauma that just comes from a bad relationship. Like, I feel like this song kind of, kind of relates to that kind of feeling, um, you know, and how, how that shit changes you, you know, people right. can, can manipulate you, uh, out of your control for so long that I feel like you can actually like, make you a different person than you were before yes. uh, almost. and that's kind of what the song's about it's kind of just about that trauma changing you if that makes sense so yeah yeah it does makes a lot of sense um <laughs> i've had traumas myself you know relationships uh, you know younger when i was younger and stuff so i mean i can relate um so <clears throat> you were before with a band called in the am yeah yeah and then you left them because it wasn't really what you were looking for as far as music wise, or, I mean, you guys just not get along. 
Well, I was, so I started that group in like 2017. I started recruiting for everybody to kind of come on board. And then uh, in 2018, we started pushing pretty hard, making music videos, um, you know, pushing like the scene in general and just, you know, what we can do. We did like a six month stint of shows and it went pretty well. It was well received and we were really pretty badass, you know, like as a, as a, as a group. But what ended up happening in the long term, it's like, I'm always the guy that kind of handles everything. I'm the writer. I play the, I play guitar on the records. I play bass. I play the, you know, the lead guitar. I uh, record the background vocals, the lead vocals, and I write all that stuff in between. And now I even, you know, I play drums four hours a day. So, you know, so now I even play the drums on the records and, um, I don't know. It's one of those things where when you bring people in as higher ons, cause that's technically what it was. It's like, it's not that I care about giving credit away for, you know, like it's not that big of a deal, but at the same time, it's like people just kind of want to tag along and be a part of what, um, and I need people that are going to be there to push me, not just follow in my, in my footsteps and just hope that I make it, you know, like, like just because I make it doesn't mean you should. And that's, that's kind of, uh, my perspective. It's like, I'm not going to put in a shit ton of money and a shit ton of my time for people who aren't going to do the same for me, you know? Right. Right. So yeah, yeah. you're solo now. Yeah, completely as a whole. <clears throat> so that's, that's why, why you just took up drums recently or. Well, drums have always been a thing for me. My, my mom wouldn't let me play drums when I was a kid because they were too loud and uh, <laughs> kind of bass on my own. And I mean, the, the thing is, when I listen to music, like I, I'm listening to the beat. I and mean, that's as a writer, like the, the rudiments are important to me, like just being able to like feel where a kick drum should be placed or like a snare drum and how to fill out and in between moments of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I just always listen to the beat. So for me, drums have just always been in my head and they just come really naturally to me. Like I'm, I'm pretty damn good. I mean, in two years, like I'm pretty legit at this point, but I guess four hours of practice a day has a, has a lot to do with it. <laughs> right. So yeah. um, when you get out on the road, are, are you going to just use, uh, backing tracks and, and do the solo thing or are you gonna you know have higher ons like you said yeah so i'll have backing i have it set up in two ways so uh when i have a drummer on on board that that can actually come on and, and fill that role i have the tracks reduced to, to a point where it's just uh has everything but the vocals and the drums on the recording mm -hmm. so that way I can play guitar over top of what's already there. I can sing, sing over top of the actual recording like it was from the album and the drums are removed so I can bring a drummer in. But other times um, I have everything else. I have it set up two ways, like I said. So um, I can. I also have a setup toward uh, everything, but the vocals are there. So uh, I can play guitar over top of that, set up everything I need on stage and just sing right over top of everything that, that I recorded initially. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, situations you know <laughs> is that uh i mean what what kind of complications can you run into with stuff like that versus like having a backing band i mean just technology failure at the end of the day you know if uh if the computer stalls out or something weird happens on stage then uh that you know that can trigger something bad but yeah you know, i will say i saw asking uh, alexandria one time and uh it's the first time i ever saw this happen in a live show uh, but I was watching the band and exactly that, like the, they had a bunch of backing tracks for their set mm -hmm. and the, you know, the guy that turned on the sound, you know, must've clicked play and it like timed out or something, but the song just stopped like about a third of the way in. No, oh, right. And, yeah. Instead of like, like just continuing through it and like playing through it, they just stopped as a whole and like, we're just really confused but they just had them replay it real quick and they corrected themselves, you know? Um, but I never saw that happen in a live show. And I know how awkward it can be for the artist and the crowd when that happens, because you're like, shit, like what just happened? You know? Um, so every bit of me uh, has a, a goal to never let that happen and make sure my technology is on point at all times. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, that, I mean, obviously you're very talented to be able to, uh, work with the technology like that and and also the instruments and sing i mean does that <clears throat> take any like kind of toll on you on, on certain days or what do you mean exactly like just well stop. like where you just get frustrated like okay you know this isn't sounding right i gotta go back and do this uh you know just i mean to to me i i feel like as a band you know I wouldn't say that you have to focus on just yourself, 
but yeah. your main like if you're the singer your main focus is on your vocals you know obviously everything else has got to be in sync and everything but you know them guys got to worry about that too now here you are doing it all and i mean when you're laying these tracks down it's i just feel like you know it would kind of be frustrating when you have moments where like a beats missed or something and you have to go back and redo it or whatever i see i don't know how all that works so i mean sure but do you ever get really do you ever get frustrated with it yeah it's extremely frustrating i the part that's the part that's most frustrating is not um necessarily the writing or the playing of the instruments like i've just been doing that for so long i'm just really proficient but the hard part and this is so crazy because no one no one i don't think really people get this but finding an engineer that's at my level is impossible in a deal. Mm-hmm. Like, then like i just have a real i have a good ear it's taking me a long ass time to write music the way i do and get it to sound the way it does and like when you hear the rest of the songs they're all of equal quality or better compared right. to them. Um, and the hard part is finding a guy that's that's fine-tuned you know i'll get a mix back sometimes from an engineer and like it's like the first cut and i'm just like all right this is gonna be cool i'm, ex- I'm excited to hear it and then I hear it and I'm like, what the fuck are you listening to? Like, how are you missing all of these details? Right. Like, it's, like this is what you do for a living. And like, a lot of times it bothers me because I'm like, these people charge 450, 550 bucks to do a mix. And then you listen to their mix and you're like, a fucking five-year-old could have mixed this. Like, you know, like it, it literally what, what pisses me off about it the most is that, that in itself that I have to instead of instead of getting someone else to work and like being able to trust them to make a mix that's amazing it's like i always have to tweak the mix so much and for so long that eventually that money becomes almost worthless in my opinion like i feel like i shouldn't even be paying them because it's all coming out of my head like in, right. ter- in terms of sound like and that really bothers me you know out, outside of that because it, it not only does it take a ridiculous amount of time to get it completed and and kind of get them to understand the kind of perfection that i i do expect like it just it's just one of those things I, I i just after a while it gets really annoying to put that time in you know what i mean mm-hmm. like to doing it over and over um yeah so if i if i can just figure out how to correct that uh, on the next ep i think the timeline will be a lot hell of a lot quicker i just need to really find an engineer that's that's on point and probably already working with like some really really massive bands just to avoid that you know i guess the missing the dots and, and having to do that for them if that makes right. sense so are yeah. you, I mean, did you actually find somebody to get this out or did you kind of have to do a lot of it yourself? Um, are you talking about the mixes? Yes. Oh yeah. I've worked with a few different engineers. Uh, one guy, you know, I, I worked with a, a mastering engineer named Tom Frampton out of the UK. That dude's amazing. Um, he owns a, a mastering company called Mastering the Mix. Mm-hmm. Um, another, another plugin company where he actually builds mastering plugins but he did what's called a STEM master for me. And we actually like kind of set up a deal where he mastered the tracks for free, like the first three tracks on the EP. Um, and he's, he's just going to use the tracks for mastering examples on his like platform for people to download and buy and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So we went through that process and uh, you know, it, it, it's still, it's still no matter what, it, it takes a long time to get the, the mix right. But that dude is on point. Um, yeah. Mixing engineers are just interesting because their job is, is hard. I feel like it, I feel like you got to give them credit where it's due to. It's like giving somebody your own piece of work and something that you've put a ton of time into and just trusting them to make it sound great is a big commitment, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know that these guys, when sometimes when they get their, their mixing list back from the first response, it's, you know, a book and they just have to correct everything they did from the, from the get go. So yeah. That's pretty much the whole the whole thing. I haven't really found the mixing engineer I'm looking for yet, to be honest with you, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Yeah, because I, I I actually uh write in the press release that it took you like two whole years and four different mixing and mastering, you know, engineers on the song and constantly what tweaking and mixing, getting six different masters before selecting the final one. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. Well, actually sent this this track to uh the guy his name is chris but he's the guy who mastered all of the brand new machine gun kelly stuff mm-hmm. so every um record he's put out this guy's pretty much mastered all of that music so i had sent it to him and when he mixed when he mastered it he's so good that the low end became a problem for me because he, he masters so well on the low end which is what they're really designed to do is carve out things that 
would normally not be that for like loud in the mix, but make him sound good. Mm-hmm. What, he brought up the low end so much that it kind of erased the vocals. It took away the vocal and the chorus. And I'm like, well, this sounds like shit. Cause now I can't even hear what the hell I'm saying. So I threw that master away. I didn't even use it because I was just frustrated with how much I paid for it. And the fact that it just didn't sound as good as the master I already had. So then I, I ended up going with the, uh, another master that I had revised from Tom, the guy in the UK. Again, that, best in the world and to anyone who ever watches this if you need good mastering engineer a good mastering engineer go to tom frampton it's a hundred bucks and he's solid <laughs> yeah cool so um what's what's next man i mean you you just got this one out do you have a new one that you're working on or something else that you've already done that you're going to be releasing in the near future yeah um i have uh four more tracks to put out as singles right now <laughs> So they're all they're all done. All of them are finished. Um, the next one gets released July, July 29th. Um, and I have a really good friend of mine named Risa Bankroll. He's a rap feature on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but he he's awesome. He's he's accumulated about two hundred and fifteen thousand followers on TikTok. He's got like thirty k followers on Instagram, and he's just really been pushing so much over the years. Um, and while I've changed names, he's kind of remained the same and his growth is, there's a lot to speak for that, you know? Um, but he's just a star of a kid. I think that when people hear the, the track, they'll, there's again, a lot of relation that can happen there. Mm-hmm. Uh, catchy and it's just got some modern production and I think people will like it. Um, moving past that though. Uh, yeah, I'm just ready to get everything else finished. And, uh, yeah, I want to put out a cover of, uh, our album of covers after this. Mm-hmm. I have a bunch of like I want to do some like rap covers, make them more, more punk or, or rap or whatever, uh, more rock. Um, and just keep doing that. I just want to keep taking things. I, I see that uh, if you look around the world right now, you see all these movies, right? There's all these movies. But if you look at, if you take a look at what's happening, it's just a bunch of remakes. Right. Because what's happening right now, it's all the streaming services that we have are erasing the ability to have budgets for stuff. And now you don't make money from music. So why would you create new music when you can just take shit that's already done well and just make it better or put your own spin on it? Right. So I hope my whole concept at this point is I'm going to make a whole album of covers because people don't listen to original music at all. Unless, unless you're Drake or, you know, somebody like that. Right. It, unless it's really, really, really perfect for the time. Um, so I'm just going to take some covers, revamp them and see what happens. That's, that's the next move. Nice. Okay, yeah. so is there any plans of getting uh, getting out? I mean, you know, hitting the road a little bit? and Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I definitely want to play some shows. Um, I'm kind of waiting to put out some more songs just so, like, I can get it out there and really, like, show people, like, the new stuff because I'm just more proud of that. Um, but, yeah, I, th- I think initially, like, once everything's kind of – once I get stuck in the pain, which is the next track out, I think I'm just going to start booking shows from there really I'd like to play at least two shows a week, a show a week. So, you know, I need, I need to get into the shows badly. See, but the problem is, is getting into shows that matter. I need people to be there, you know, so getting with bigger bands, you know, having their fan base there and kind of tour hacking in the sense of, of playing for their crowd. Right. And kind of bringing them over to my side as well. Um, you know, you gotta, I gotta be strategic if I'm going to do this at all. So that's kind of the thought process is, Let's do some, some, let's make some good moves and see what we can make happen. You know, I agree with that. I mean, wholeheartedly, I, I, uh, like we was discussing that, you know, my platform isn't that big. Um, I'm still working on my website. I'm, you know, still working on a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I work a normal full-time job, you know, I've got a family with three girls, um, You know, so it's it's makes it rough, but I mean, because there's days that I'll just come home and I'm like, man, I really don't want to do this. But then, you know, I'll sit down and write something down, or you know, something came to me throughout the day. I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, look this up or whatever. It's so, you know, it's <clears throat> it's almost like having two jobs. But you yeah. know, I love this one more than I love the one that pays me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but like you were saying, you know, I mean. <clears throat> I've watched other people do interviews and, you know, I've subscribed to their channel and liked, you know, and now they're starting to do the same to me, you know, sure. and, and in the YouTube world, I guess they call that piggybacking. Yeah. Which, you know, Hey, whatever works. I mean, if I can get them more views, if they can get me more views, great. Absolutely. You know? Um, and like we were saying, er, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. So yeah. 
obviously you've already been in the music business for a little while, mm-hmm. you know, as where, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> my, um, you know, I did, I did a few interviews and then I just kind of, I fell off of it for a while. Uh, so my YouTube, I, I like had, I think when I started doing it again, I had like 12 subscribers. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So then I started doing it again. And I mean, I, I've, you know, done, I think you'll be like my 60th video since I started doing it again. And this yeah. is over a span of the last few months. Yeah. And, exactly. I, and I love it, man, because I mean, I meet people from all over. Like I did a band uh, named Denver from India. Wow. <laughs> You know, I was actually talking, it was like noon here and 8.30 in the evening there. Wow. And I mean, it's opened me up to all kinds of different genres. It's opened me up to all kinds of different, you know, cultures and people uh, from all over. I mean, it's been great. And and the uh, it's nice to meet people that are like-minded. And, you know, you guys possess the talent that I love you guys possess the talent that I love talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's, that's what's so great about it for me. I mean, you know, I, I, as a kid, I tried to play guitar. I tried to play drums, you know, and I think I never really just had the patience for it. You know, it just, I, I was always too involved in, you know, sports, girls, bikes, you know, dirt bikes, stuff like that to really sit down and say, Hey, this is what I want to do. But I've always, like I said, just had this love for music and, I think covers are awesome, man. I mean, I have a publicist that's been sending me a lot of uh, covers, this band called OHP. They're kind of like that guy, uh, Leo. I can't pronounce his last name, but I'm sure you've seen him on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Luke Frog Studios. Yeah, they're kind of like him. Uh, they okay. actually just did Wannabe from uh, the Spice Girls. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty cool. Hell yeah. So, I mean, I think like what you're saying, you know, you can take it and make it your own. You can put a spin on it however you want, you know, and, you know, I mean, that's obviously a hip hop song and you throw guitars and drums in there with you know, double kick and everything. And <laughs> it was pretty rocking. Hell yeah. That's awesome. See, you know, what's crazy. It's like you talk about the patience factor. Like I kind of view that kind of view music like this, like all the, all the time I've put in, I could be a doctor. Like mm-hmm. right now, I could be a doctor, <laughs> you know, like. It's, it's, it's taken me so much damn time that people, people will never stand it. Like it's, that's what you do when you're passionate. Like when you, when you have passion, I'm sure, I know you know that, but right. I've just given so much time to this that it's impossible to ignore. And not only that, I mean, if you saw the investments I've made in this stuff, it's just, it's all a little crazy. I think a typical person, a normal person would be like, what the hell are you doing? You know, like, right. And you know what? I don't know why I do this. I do it because I love to do it. It's there's no other meaning behind it, you know. Um, and there's something up to me about this challenge that comes to, like from drums, for example. They hurt. It hurts to play them. Mm-hmm. You know, hurt. It takes a lot of stamina. Um, and there's just this level of perfection that you can accomplish, but you never, you never really get to be perfect. No matter how good you are you're always going to make minor mistakes and the people aren't going to hear that, but you are. And Mm -hmm. that's the uh, drums is you can literally never stop learning. You know? Um, In fact, if you ever heard of this guy named Eric in Prada, um, he was, uh, he won the guitar center um, drum off one year. I think, I think I've heard of him. Yeah. That that guy is like, to me, like the, like the, uh, how do I say this? The epitome of, putting in an, an insane amount of time because when you see him play, you just know he has thousands and thousands of hours into playing. It's, he's just so good. He's like a machine, you know? Um, and I'm good, but I'm not that level yet. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. But the, the thing is, is, I mean, you, I wouldn't, I mean, I guess I kind of say you, you sound like a perfectionist. So you're going, you're going to, you know, you'll get there someday, man. I mean, because if, if you're, I mean, you got this drive that pushes you and this, this love for making music. And I mean, that's really all you need. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's, you you don't do something. You don't put a lot of time into something. You don't do a lot of something that you're like, eh, you know, whatever it's, it's, it's okay. Or, you know, I hate it. You know, you, I mean, 
when you love something, it's like anything in life that you love, a child, a wife, you know, uh, a plant, you yeah. know, that, absolutely. You yeah. nurture it and it grows and it grows and you all grow together. And I mean, and that's what I'm saying, man, you know, mad respect for that. I appreciate that. Dude, it's been a lot of work. Um, so that means a lot to me. Uh, I, I'm really, I'm really excited for you to hear the new stuff. I think this song probably I, I'm, I'm questioning my release tactics right now. It's like, should I have put out what I, what have I become first? Uh, I probably should have, you know, taken the time to do a couple other ones just to kind of build up that attention a little bit. Um, I think it's a better song than, than the social media response I've been able to get so far is. Mm -hmm. I think that's funny when you put out music that's like really well made and like people just aren't ready for it. Cause they don't realize like almost like I've been so quiet over the years. I feel like people don't realize the level of professionalism that I hit. Like, right. You know, like how are they supposed to know? They have no idea, you know? So as I grow the platform and kind of get these numbers back to where they need to be, it'll be interesting to see like if that song comes back kind of resurfaces and people start listening to it, mm -hmm. then, you know? So yeah, just excited to see what the future has to hold. I think you'll love the new stuff. Um, that's a blend of rap metal, uh, there's some obviously just straight, straight up rock, straight down the middle stuff in there and uh, a lot of modern sounds. So hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Uh, like I said, there's not a not a whole lot out there I don't like. Um, <clears throat> some of your. I, I don't even know what to call them, but uh, bands that kind of just make goofy music. Uh, there was a, a band not too long ago. Uh, I did a live interview with uh saliva and otherwise and um oh another band called ninth planet out but the first band and i'm not going to mention her name because i don't want to put them down it just wasn't my scene sure. they were goofy as hell i mean the the beats were okay but it was like 10 people on stage just jumping around stuff you know kind of remind me of like green jelly or whatever yeah and, I, mean, I don't know i just i i like stuff that is more straightforward like you said you know that there's emotion in that you can feel. Um, always been a huge fan of like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, you know, bands like that. Um, my son turned me on to the new shit. So, I mean, like, you know, Avenged Sevenfold, Devil Wears Prada, you know, actually not too long ago, did a, a interview with Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it, he was really cool. I mean, we were, he's doing, getting ready to do a solo thing after breaking Benjamin's done touring. Um, he's going out with the band red and, oh, yeah. so, you know, we talked a little bit about the current tour and, and, you know, breaking Benjamin, but we focused more on, you know, what he's getting ready to do. And I mean, I listened to some of his tracks guys, phenomenal, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it is, man. It's just, I, I, I like music that has a meaning and, you know, that's, that's what you're focused on. And, you know, I think eventually when people catch on to that, you'll, you'll definitely have a way bigger fan base. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I hope. I, I think this music definitely has the potential to go all the way. See, that's that's the crazy thing. It's like I started making music with a with that in mind. It's like, you know, you got to make stuff that people can that will last, that people can continue to listen to. Mm -hmm. If you don't look, you can make it just because you love it and that's fine. But you also have to make some, if you're going to try to do something with it, you might as well really try, you yeah. know, might as well make shit that like might still be playing in 10 years. You know, that, right. that's, that's, that's why the perfectionist and the, that, that just that part of me, like I want it to be perfect. It has to compete with top 40 records. If it right. doesn't, then I'm not putting it out. I, I'm not going to do it anymore. You know, like, so that's my whole perspective on it. It's, I don't know, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, that, that's, that's uh, good to have, you know, high expectations for yourself like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that allows you to, you know, allows you a little room for success and failure. It allows you some room for, you know, um, growth. And, you know, as, as long as I, I feel like as long as you believe in yourself, kind of, you know, constantly, man, you'll, you'll get there. Just, yeah. Just like me, I mean, I feel like one of these days, you know, I might be able to do a, an interview with somebody like, you know, Avenged Sevenfold or something, you know, just somebody, like I said, it's, I, I love the independent artists. I love the the music I've been doing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, if I could I always think, man, if I could get this band, I could get this band, you know, my, my views would go up, this would go up, but I don't really do it for that. 
Like yeah. I, said, I do it just because I, I like it and I like talking to people about music and, you know, meeting people. So, man, I'm going to go sure. ahead and uh, let you go. We, uh, we've been at it for a minute, but I appreciate your time and uh, definitely will look forward to the new music. Um, if you go on Facebook, my page is Let's Talk Music. Okay. Um, you know, there's, I got, you know, stuff on there that other interviews that I've done, I've also, you know, just kind of post random things, you know, um, you know, that also allow us to connect so that, you know, you can send me new stuff or whatever, um, you know, and I will get this edited and up on YouTube, send over to Allison and, you know, best of luck to you, buddy. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for taking the time to do it. Um, when I send it, when I get some new stuff done and kind of get it out, I'll just shoot you a message and let me know what you think about it. I appreciate you taking the time to interview me, though. Hey, man, it's my pleasure. Awesome. Pleasure All for right. me. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. You too, man. Thank you.